Just want to take a little time here. This is Friday, the 31st of March. Spring's here. Um, just to talk about that proverb that we've hit upon in the past, but it, it does say many things, and I think it speaks to our culture. Um, it's Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 29 and 30. You'll find the same thing in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 1 through 4. But it's the verse that says that fathers have eaten sour grapes. Now, what it means is, is that they ate something that was wouldn't really satisfy and wasn't necessarily as nutritious as it should have been. Uh, kind of like living your life and having your life spent on things that really will not produce any eternal fruit. Uh, not going to take any of it with us. We just spoke about that in First Timothy chapter 6, one of Paul's pr principles that he speaks to the, the wealthy about. He says, you didn't come into this life with anything and you're not going to leave with anything. The only thing we have that we can take with us is our faith and the souls that we've uh, been allowed to invest in. If someone comes to Christ, that, that's Paul says, that's my crown. That's my treasure. Well, so the fathers have eaten sour grapes. They've eaten things that just simply were not satisfying and you know, wasn't something that would fulfill you. And certainly life is a bitter experience for those people that choose a certain direction in life. Proverbs chapter 13 tells us that the way of a transgressor is hard. It's, I think it's verse 12, but I might be wrong there. Uh, yeah, sour grapes. But then it goes on to say, and the children's teeth are set on edge. The word there for set on edge, or the verb, is the word that's used in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. The only other usage, other than Ezekiel 18.2, where this proverb is quoted again, to speak of an iron axe whose blade has become dull. Therefore, it takes much more effort to cut wood. Um, wisdom would say that you should sharpen the axe. And the truth here, I think, this would be probably the best way to understand this. If the Father's testimony is a bland testimony, that they've, they've consumed things that are not satisfying, that will never produce, <clears throat> not, even, not even palatable, not even good, <clears throat> nothing that will produce any great lasting fruit, They've sought after all the things which will never satisfy, like the rich man versus Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. If they've done that, then the truth of the matter is uh, they've produced a weak testimony to their children. Their children's teeth are weakened. They, and they, they have less of an, an ability to identify with life. And... Perhaps we can see that in our culture today. A culture of where people, of you know the old saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. But we probably should flip that around. Sticks and stones, ah, eh, but your words are killing me. Because today, you would think that just something that people melt because of the way that someone speaks to them or the, the way they might refer to them. How did that happen? Well, perhaps the children's ability to even digest life has been weakened because the parent's testimony has been one of searching out the things that have no, that will never satisfy never satisfied, that cannot satisfy. Now what that tells me, and I hope it tells you, is that if we spend our life pursuing those things which are above, the things that truly have value and worth and merit, the things that can only be received by faith that we can't see, but yet it's true, it's real, and there's substance to it in Hebrews 11.1, 1, 
if we spend our life searching for those things that we're producing, if our children watch us as we go through those experiences and faith is proven to be real, we're cultivating their appetite and their maturity in life. Isn't, by the way, we'll close here, but isn't that what it says in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 13 and 14 where he talks about the fact that I can't give you anything that you could really chew on because you can't handle me. And how does he define that in the next verse? You can't discern between good and evil. You can't really understand the things that are honoring to God and the things that are dishonoring because, because your life has been spent seeking the things that don't satisfy. I hope for all of us today, let's set our sights on the things that truly do satisfy, the things that satisfy our soul. Till next time, friends. God bless you.